Welcome back. Let me just say, the Niger Delta has struggled with developmental issues for a long time. Uh, many blame the political elite for the situation. In your opinion, what or who is to blame and how can we move forward? You see, that, that, that word blame is a very, very powerful word. And, and once you start looking for who to blame and who, looking for who to make a scapegoat, we could start going down a very, very uh, ugly road. Uh, many years ago, at the height of the problem during uh, Obasanjo's presidency, uh, many people don't know that I actually myself paid a, a, a private visit down to the creeks to see Tompolo. I'm from Agbo, I'm not directly from the creeks. But as a young monarch, I had to ask myself, if this nation now is under fire, is under problem, and the Almighty God has seen it in His great wisdom, to place a very young monarch on an extremely old throne, can I really sit quiet while the country is engulfed in flames from my generation? And I decided that that could not be. So I approached Governor Udwaha at the time, who uh, to his credit was very uncomfortable with the idea, was a bit scared with the idea, but I had the confidence in the Almighty God and I had the confidence uh, in the government itself that uh, the young men in the creeks would welcome the idea that such a powerful young monarch was willing to risk his life to come down to talk with them. And truly, we went down there. I went down there with uh, two of my uh, former armed forces men, Rear Admiral Luma and uh, General Abugo. Uh, they accompanied me down there and uh, I met with Tom Polo. I was able to see how beautiful the creeks were. I was able to see white beaches, beautiful white beaches. Only thing that they were scarred by oil. I was hoping to see a crocodile or two, but I was unfortunately told by the locals they had not seen crocodiles in many a decade. Since all this oil had polluted, I was shown by locals how they have to wash their fish with soap. It was a very painful and sore experience for me because I knew that Miami in the United States had beaches like we have beaches, but these beaches were attracting hordes and hordes of tourists. Revenue that we could sorely use for this country. So if I'm able to do that, it's not that I would place the blame at anybody's feet. What we need in this country is, is less blame game. What we need is an understanding that, hey, we have gotten things wrong. This is a mighty nation. God has taken many different people together and put them into one country, an amazing country with amazing people, very hardworking people. We all have a part to blame. If we see our royal fathers, if we see our senators and house of reps not doing what we wish them to do we have a responsibility to talk up where there's a situation where we continue to keep quiet while the country the country continues to go backwards and slide backwards we all are to blame there's no one in particular person to blame the president has an amazingly difficult job to do what we need to do is start giving him advice and stop picking for what he has done wrong, what this person has done wrong, what that person has done wrong. At the time when they were doing those wrongs, most of us kept quiet. Your Majesty, you, as, as you were saying, you were quoted in 2011 as saying that we must demand accountability from our political leaders. We must demand for full disclosures. We must ask for transparency and, and service from them. We obviously are not doing enough of that, which is why, why you said that. How can we ask for accountability? How can we make our leaders accountable to us? By following the Constitution. Within the Constitution, they're very accountable to us. It's, it's very, very clear within the Constitution. And, and I must commend President Buhari right now. Whether anybody likes it or not, we've all been privy to what has been going on recently. Uh, the NSA has just been picked up for questioning. The former chief security officer of Jonathan has just been picked up for questioning. We should not immediately countenance them to be bad people. We should not immediately countenance them to be uh, in the wrong already. But I think we're seeing something that we've never really seen before. 
So at this point, I think that we need to refrain from prejudgment and allow this government to become comfortable and allow them to get on with their work. I'm not a politician. I, I wish the politicians luck. Their job is never an easy one. But certainly, the PDP and the APC, they're not just at loggerheads with each other. These are friends. They know each other. They've grown up in this country together. The PDP will be sad to see this country go down the drain. The APC will be sad to see this country go down the drain. So at some point, we need to stop bickering about what's wrong and start putting things right. Accountability is, is nothing to be afraid of. We need to be accountable. I know that when I join my ancestors, when I finally go to wherever God wishes me to go to, I am going to be accountable. The Bible tells me, woe be unto the kings and the judges of the earth. I take that as a very, very serious, very, very serious quote indeed. It means to me that when I join my ancestors, I will be asked by the Almighty God, what did you do for your people? Whereas others will be judged on their own, as a leader, you will be judged on everybody that you have been led. It's not the same type of judgment. We need to fear that. We need to be respectful of that. You were Chancellor of the University of Illori. What exactly did you find to be the problem with the educational system? By God's grace, uh, uh, in my particular experience, uh, uh, Mr. President uh, Obasanjo gave me one of the best universities in the country. So apart from the initial problems that they had between staff and uh, between the uh, actual governing council, uh, the University of Lauren was a remarkable place. I saw what could be done within a university when the funds that were given to it were utilized properly. And as you brought it up, please let me very much uh, thank uh, Professor Zaloyo there. Professor Zomali and the present uh, Vice Chancellor, Professor Ambali, for having done an amazing job. I was proud to have stayed as the Chancellor of that university and to have actually have been, I'm still yet to verify it, but I believe the youngest Chancellor in possibly the world. That is another garland to Nigeria's neck. So um, certainly moving away from me, Lauren, we do have some issues in our schools. Um, I think it's quite clear that we could move out from here now and go to some schools, uh, primary and secondary, and see that the children are studying in sweltering heat. Uh, the children don't have proper toilets. The, the children, uh, um, unfortunately, don't have proper desks to sit at. Uh, another issue that I, I, am, I personally don't like um, is the way sometimes our children are taught to interact. I, I've seen many children, uh, they come, it's almost an aggressive nature when they're talking. It's very aggressive indeed. And you will find that this aggressiveness follows them into teenage years and it follows them until we get to the Senate where unfortunately sometimes we're having some great shouting matches and uh, that I don't think is, is the healthiest thing. So we, we do have some ways to go and of course if the educational system is not corrected then then there's very little hope for us as a nation so we do have some considerable work to do where it concerns the educational system within the country we must take another break now when we return i will be speaking with his royal majesty about the distinction of being the world's youngest monarch among other things please stay with us <laughs> 